Hi guys, I'm in a gallery. No, I'm not. We have a very exciting Kickstarter coming extremely soon. It's going live next Monday. Please sign up down below if you would like to see the most beautiful cabinets you have ever laid your eyes on for your miniatures. Really excited about this. Check out the link below now. All right, so here we have the initially primed model. I've got about four hours to get into the best standard possible. I've not tried to hit everywhere with a primer. I'll catch those with the airbrush or with the brush brush. Um, the recessed areas are not going to get the most physical painting anyway, as in they don't stick out so they won't get scraped bunny ears by dry brushing. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to fill in the gaps with the airbrush and uh, we have to go. And then we just stop being scared of our model, get some zenithal priming down and uh, things will feel a little bit more healthy. Not very much time though, so uh, that's the main issue. I don't want to do anything that I have to reverse, so we're going to be doing the basics solidly and then probably putting down a wash or something like that, spending some time on the base and on the face. The face is still blue tacked, so it should be easy to pull it off. All right, mask off. So here is where we are. Quite a bit appreciating on the go. As you can see, I've tried to suggest that his hand is lit. That's probably the most important part of the piece and also that the mushrooms are light sources. It's a little more subtle in real life than this looks. The white's being picked up quite aggressively by the camera. Maybe that's a bit better. Anyway, yeah. Got our colours down, kind of got some purple vibes going on from below, which is what we did with the rest of the army. So now it's time to start putting some colours down. real shame here actually a bit gutted about this the areas where i filled in insignia you can see one here you can see one here you can see one here because the milliput's softer than plastic um, when i've sanded them the sponge has kind of pressed into the milliput more than the plastic and despite the fact that it's got plastic either side i've actually ended up with still some recessed details not nearly as recessed as they were which was a lot but um yeah i think there was a, there is a bleh. there is a way around this tongue twister when you're tired um i'm gonna have to paint any areas with these on traditionally so dry brushing and washing because they're texture based techniques they're really going to show this up i just need to hold that in mind and all of his flesh is going to have to be done with layering at, at least over these sections which shouldn't be too bad but yeah it, it is a real shame things like this just look like a scar that's kind of okay but Anything that looks like a tattoo, like that's the horn rat symbol on a stick or something like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fairly obvious if I use holy texture techniques on them. So I'm going to have to work out how to get around that basically. Maybe the armor plates I'm just going to rust up as a result of this. Uh, it'll look cool as well, but um, yeah, that's a real shame. I'm pretty gutted about that. But say la vie, this is how it works with conversions and things like that. And I don't have the time to change it particularly or the inclination he's had enough hours in his building. A learning point for the future.
Okay, so start with some brushwork on the base and actually I've put a little bit on, on the blade, which is looking kind of cool at the moment. Time to make a bit of a start on the wings. I think I'm just gonna go with a fade from, uh, you know, inside to outside and then block out the ribs. Um, I might try moth wings at a later date on it. The base is looking quite cool actually and any extra time I get once I've done the mushrooms and things like that, I'll go on to detailing. I think I'm gonna stipple the armor and then give it a light dry brush so it looks a little bit metallic. And same for the fur, we'll give it a dry brush and then the entire thing's not had a wash on it yet, which is very weird for me. So we'll be putting down some washes in different places. The tail, I think it's gonna to have to come to the event blue tag, which is awful, but I don't wanna glue it on and then have it permanently in the way. It does add a lot to what's going on. Um, obviously it needs washing because it's quite a bit paler than the rest of him now, uh, which it's not been hit as heavily with the, with the glazy colors from below, but uh, it should look pretty tasty when it's uh, when it's all done. All right then, uh, yeah, final straight. We've got like 40 more minutes. Let's do our best. Okay, so there are a few mistakes I made in this uh, rookie ones, especially when you're really tired. It's worth front loading the tasks that require precision as early as possible because you're just gonna get worse and worse and worse. More on that shortly. So you can see I'm moving around the model. I'm trying to cover the bits that have got the biggest, most messy tasks first. That is sensible, but there's definitely um, some key things that I should have should have done earlier and left, you know, like blocking in and washing and stuff like that until the end. starting to make some decent progress. Here is probably where I would say that I could have swapped things around fairly significantly. So the silhouette of this model is gonna be badass. Um, the wings get a huge amount of attention and the way that I'm trying to get away with this piece done in a fast fashion is this step you can see here. So these uh, veins or whatever you call them that are running along the wings, uh, not only is the silhouette super recognizable, but they are really dark on a really light background. Um, they were horrible to paint when I was tired, like really, really, really bad. And because the wings are completely separate from the rest of it, I could have absolutely just, you know, left this and had it done way, way, way earlier and then done basic tasks after that. But uh, you know, you live and learn. So yeah, you can see it's all easy stuff here. I could have done this right towards the start of it and hated my life a little bit less. It does look great though. And the silhouette really, really does work. 